Back, we just spoke with Congressman Joe Courtney about his bid for re-election in the 2nd Congressional District. Now the Republican candidate for that seat is here. We welcome Mike France to Studio A. Mike, thank you so much for being with us. Great to be here with you, Eric. One of the things that I know you've talked a lot about is that your campaign is kind of built on a lifetime of service. Tell voters that maybe some in the district who aren't familiar with you and your record, how did you get here today to be running for this seat? Well, it's interesting. This this district, this race in 2022 is very different from any other race uh, in the past in Eastern Connecticut. Now, as a choice of a candidate, that is different than every other challenger to Joe Courtney. You know, as I look at it, that uh, really in the antidote to Joe Courtney and the false image that he has created over time. But what really is the service that you get to is I uh, spent my life in the service of the military, 20 years in active duty. Uh, started enlisted in submarines, <clears throat> came here to Groton in 1981. Uh, and ultimately finished my career after earning my commission and serving on surface ships as a junior officer back here at Supervisor of Shipbuilding in Groton, Connecticut, as the program manager representative for the combat system on Virginia class submarines. Following my retirement from the Navy, I joined as a defense contract, still support the Virginia class submarine program, uh, but entered into service to my community uh, and uh, started off as all well, my kids were swimmers, and so I started off with the swim team at the high school. Uh, but ultimately led to serving on the town council and now as a state representative for the last four years serving Ledger, Preston, and Montville. I know uh, one thing I'm sure you've heard this uh, that supporters of Congressman Courtney talk about is the two subs a year and some of the positions he's risen to on the Armed Services Committee and, and things like that and that that is an important protection that Eastern Connecticut needs. What's your rebuttal to that, that his experience matters when it comes to building the two subs? Well, it, it experience is limited, frankly. He understands the submarine industry as a line item in the budget. Uh, where I lived it. I served on submarines, qualified on submarines. Uh, I've lived as an acquisitor professional for the last 25 years in the submarine community, both in con new construction as well as on the uh, maintenance and repair side. And so I understand that industry better than he does because I served it. I think the other aspect to it is when you look at uh, the contracts that have come in, uh, that is the needs of the Navy that have come into here and the submarines that we need. But when you look at it, like there was an uh, editorial last week in the Wall Street Journal that highlighted the la this fact that we're behind on submarines. We need more submarines, and yet I don't hear Joe Courtney talking about that. He written this title, To Sub Joe, and you know, the reality is on that one point is that it was announced shortly after he was sworn in. And, it's unlikely that he had a large influence over that. Certainly, has sustained that uh, through his time in office. Uh, but that alone is not uh, sufficient, frankly, to warrant that. And when you look at the other aspects of you know, what the people in Eastern Connecticut are going through, related to inflation, the economy, and other things, uh, having two submarines per year is a part of the issue. But the people in Eastern Connecticut are feeling the burden of the cost of living in here in the state. You've made a lot of his voting record, uh, which you say ties very closely to, closely to Nancy Pelosi, uh, which suggests a, a, a dyed-in-the-wool Democrat who's not going to ever think about anything else. What makes you different, and can you cite something in your voting record that you would say, look, I I'm not just going to vote with my party here. I'm going to do something different. Well, people can look at my voting record. I had eight years of voting in the legislature, and my alignment with my party leader is very different than the one you see with Joe Courtney. And what we see is a, a party line vote, and it's disappointing because that's not the image that he tries to portray. In fact, he had a recent uh, ad that claims that he puts uh, the, the district of the party, but that's not his voting record. And as my parents raised me up to believe that your actions speak louder than words, I would look at the voting record before I went to look at what people say. And if you look at my voting record, I don't line up with my party leader uh, in, the, in the legislature, but Joe Courtney does. One thing that, of course, has gotten a lot of attention is the Supreme Court decision uh, on abortion. And after it came in, you said that you thought that they got it right, that there should be no role for the federal government in the <clears throat> abortion debate. Now we have this proposal uh, for a nationwide uh, ban after 15 weeks. Will you commit now to voting no on that if it comes up for a vote if you're elected? Well, what I, I've listened to the pro-choice residents in my district, and this is what I hear from them. Uh, universally, they oppose late-term abortions in the last trimester. Uh, they believe that reasonable limits are appropriate. Uh, but when I look at Joe Courtney, uh, he voted to essentially nullify every law across the country at the state level, including access to abortion all the way up to birth, which is an interesting because he's issued fundraising emails on this point. Uh, and it, the disappointing thing is that 
that doesn't align with the people that I've talked to uh, who are pro-choice. The universe at reasonable limits, and if you look at Europe, the standard in Europe is 12 weeks. You know, the extreme in Europe is 15 weeks. And so when you look at those kinds of limits, uh, that seems to be a reasonable limit that most people agree with. And every pro-choice person I've talked with across the district agrees with. So there's a proposal out there. How would you vote on it? If it was proposed for it, I would vote yes. I think that the reason is very clear because the Supreme Court has ruled on that. I don't believe that the Supreme Court should be the final say for the people. And our elected representatives are responsible for that. And since the Supreme Court has spoken on that, I think it's appropriate. Uh, but I do believe, frankly, that it is uh, more appropriately the role of the states and their elected representatives in the legislature to decide what's right for the people that live in that state. You talked about your background of starting at the local level, now the state level, hoping to get to Washington. What is it about your political style or your legislating style that you think would make you a good choice in this district? I think the first thing that I learned uh, serving locally, the biggest thing I learned was how government is supposed to work. When I look at serving on the town council in Ledger, uh, you have the ability for the individual citizen to come in and seek redress for their government and expect an answer. As I've gone to Hartford, I've seen that has been diminished a little. There are legislators up there that believe that oh, if you want to talk to me, you send me an email or you call my aide. Uh, I've been back in the district, university, doing quarterly town hall meetings to allow the people of my district to come talk to me directly. I think that is what I learned. Uh, as I go to Hartford, what I've learned there is the importance of building relationships across the aisle. Uh, as the current ranking member on appropriations and last term the ranking member on the government and administration and elections committee, I built relationships with the chairs of those two committees and that helped us put forward better legislation for the people of Connecticut. And that value and learning that value front in the serving the legislature uh, leads that to me. We have 30 seconds left. Make a final pitch to voters. Why should they vote for you over Joe Courtney? Well, I think that the time for change has happened because Eastern Connecticut is being forgotten. When you look at the voting record of Joe Courtney, uh, it is not in line with the values of Eastern Connecticut. We have seen that over the last trend. I think that having somebody who served in submarines, understands what happened with the sub base, understands what happens with submarine construction uh, from a personal level is critical to having leadership in, on, uh, in the Congress. All right, Mike France, the Republican challenger in the 2nd District. We appreciate you being with us here on CT22. Thank you, Eric.